Hello, ladies. This is my first time using it this way, and I'm doing it, I'm recording it now by myself, and then I am saving it as private, and I'm going to premiere it on Monday. <clears throat> so today is Saturday, and I'm getting ready to go to Arizona with my whole family. We are leaving um, 3 a.m. Monday, so hopefully everything will go all right and this will be started with no glitches come Monday night. That way, as I'm primering this, you guys can all watch it and then, you know, do the live chat and leave comments and all that. So if I would have just recorded it and downloaded it and then made it as a video, you wouldn't have had the live chat feature. So we're going to try this. So um, it's going to be weird doing this without any commentary going on the chat. So hopefully I did everything right and I set it up to where um, everything's right because this is my first time. So, so if people start chatting, I'm going to be like, uh-oh, <laughs> I did something wrong. But I think it's fine. So let's get into it. So the last couple of weeks, just as a recap, uh, two weeks ago, we went over grace in your parenting, which I think is super, super important and I think is lacking in quite a few areas in some families and in some homes. So I kind of wanted to hit on that. And then last week we did grace in your um, marriage relationship and everything that that entails. And so this is the last week in the final series of it. And then I'm going to start having guests on again, but I need to figure out the whole system of having people on and what I'm going to do for that. I think I have to do it through Wirecast now, which is a lot more difficult to figure out. And it has a lot more glitches than Google Hangouts had. So I need to try to figure that out, get that set up and ready to go before I have my next guest on. So um, anyways, let's get into grace in your friendships. And this is something that I feel like a lot of women really struggle with. Um, some women just have a really, really hard time making friends. And the Bible does say a man that has friends must show himself friendly. So, you know, one of the biggest things for having friends is you have to make an effort. You have to go out of your way to try to make friends and be a friend to someone because being a friend does take work. It does take effort, just like anything in life. Anything in life that is good takes work and effort. Raising good kids is really, really hard. But if you want to raise good kids, it takes a lot of effort and you can't be lazy. Can't be a lazy parent. Um, having a good marriage is difficult a lot of times and you have to put a lot of work into that and um, really try to cultivate that. And the same goes for friendships. I'm at the point in my life, I have um, a few good friends and I feel like I'm to the point just with so much that I have on my plate as far as my family and my church. And I love all of my church ladies. So <clears throat> that's really not even a factor. But as far as me cultivating friendships and um, really putting a lot of effort into friendships, I feel like I'm good with the few close friends that I have because friendships do take a lot of work. They take a lot of time. You know, you have to get to know someone and you have to really communicate well with them and spend time with them. And I feel like sometimes I'm just running on empty because I have so much that I'm outputting in so many different areas. And I'm sure a lot of you um, feel the same way. You know, I'm almost 40. So my best friend, um, Erica, we have been best friends since we were 12. So I mean, this is just spanning years and years and years and years and years of being friends. And what is that like 26 years? of being best friends. And so that obviously I'm almost 40. I'm doubt I'm going to have another friendship that comes along, you know, 26 year friendship from now. You know, if I started the, what I'm trying to say is it would take me 26 years to get to the point that Erica and I are at now. So, <clears throat> and we both, we know each other like the back of our hand. We know what each other's thinking before the other one even thinks it. We know each other's personality. And the funny thing is we have completely opposite personalities. And that's one thing you'll find too. A lot of times opposite personalities attract each other. Um, I'm thinking of the majority, almost all of the close friends that I have, they're introverts. And I am an extrovert. And it's just funny because extroverts and introverts are often drawn to each other. So that's an interesting, interesting thing. Now, the funny thing is, though, about my marriage, both my husband and I are extroverts. So we both like to talk a lot and it works well for us. But even in marriages, you'll find that um, extroverts and introverts often end up together. 
they kind of balance each other out. So you'll find that in friendships, a lot of times extroverts and introverts are drawn to each other, uh, different personalities, whereas I'm sometimes more harsh when it comes to making judgment calls. My best friend tends to be more uh, lenient and compassionate and well, you got to put yourself in their situation and she tries thinking of that way a lot. So we balance each other out though, because sometimes she can be a little too soft on people. So then I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you might want to address this with them. So we do um, balance each other out, but <clears throat> good friendships are rare. You know, it's, it's hard. I know a lot of women that they really struggle in this area and they do feel like they don't have a close friend. And I really feel for women like that, you know, everyone needs someone that they can pour their heart out to without any um, fear of repercussion for that or fear of being judged or, you know, fear of just their secret getting out there. If it's a, you, if your friend is a gossip or something, but you know, one thing I want you to remember about grace is grace is not something you can demand. OK, it's not something that you can demand of other people, but grace is something that you as the giver can freely give to other people. Grace is your choice to give. Just like God showed his grace to us, we cannot demand that he shows his grace. He chose freely to give of his grace to us. And it's like that with us, with other people. We can't demand people to forgive us for things. If we wrong someone, we can't say, now, I know I wronged you, but you better forgive me. You know, we cannot demand retribution um, when it comes to people hurt, hurting us or wronging us. That has to be their choice. So it's the same way with grace. But as a woman, you hold a lot of, I want to say power, but a lot of pull in your life when you choose to give grace to someone. And I, I do believe, too, that how you treat other people and how you respond to other people will eventually you will be blessed or cursed by that. I really, really feel that way. If you are constantly um, making, you know, horrible judgment calls on other people or attacking them wrongly, I believe that you are going to be attacked wrongly in your life, too. I really feel, um, you know, reaping and sowing plays a lot into this. So let's get into friendship. Um, you know, when it comes to friendship, obviously, you need to be slow to anger. And you need to be quick to forgive. <clears throat> you know, there's going to be times that a lot of, like I said, a lot of, a lot of times different personalities are um, drawn to each other. So you might not understand, or you might, it might hurt if your friend does something to you that she is not intending to hurt you. It's just part of her personality. Or if you, I feel like in my friendships, I'm more of the one that would be the one hurt, like, doing something stupid. I don't know. I feel like my my friends that I'm close to, I think I feel like they take more time to kind of think through things before they respond where it's just like me instantly a response comes to mind. So um, I have to watch this in my own life. I have to be careful. You know, one thing for me, one, one thing, part of my personality is that I'm a fixer. If someone comes to me with a problem, I want to try to fix it. And so oftentimes I'll have friends that they want, they don't really want a solution. They just want to vent. And I have learned, I've got, <clears throat> I used to be really bad about this, but I have learned um, in the last few years, that I just need to keep my mouth shut. And let's say they've just had a horrible day. Instead of as a friend being like, well, here's what you could have done differently. You could have done this differently. And you could have done this and you need to be on a schedule and you need to do this and you need to have your kids do this. Uh, maybe you just need to say, I'm so sorry. That sounds awful. You know, what can I do to help? And then if they say, I just need someone to listen to me while I vent, then be that person. If you live close, you now me and my best friend, we, we live um, almost six hours apart. So this wouldn't be possible. But if you live close, um, if they say, just come over and keep me company, go over, you know, keep your company. If they say, I need someone to help me clean my house, go help clean their house. <clears throat> so um, a lot of times you just have to be quiet and listen to your friends. So a way that you can show your friend grace is by not being quick to try to offer a solution when one is not asked for. <laughs> and I've had to learn that the hard way because I do, I like to fix things and men are oftentimes like this when their wives are talking to them for, um, 
you know, if, if you've had a really bad day and you just want to talk to your husband about it and he, and he'll, he'll jump into the fixing mode. Okay. Well, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. You know, husbands like to do that, but um, sometimes as wives, we just need someone to vent to. And that's where girlfriends come in because girlfriends understand, I think a little more what we go through when it comes to that. They have, most dads have not been stay at home dads. Now, if you're a stay at home dad, then maybe you understand that a little more, but most dads have not been. <clears throat> so, you know, be there for your friend. Like I said, if your friend calls and she she needs something or she asks something of you, be there for her. You know, be the friend to her that you want. So what are you lacking in your life? Are you lacking someone who is compassionate? Then be the compassionate one for someone else. Are you lacking someone who, that you want to spend more time with? Then try to spend time with your friends if that's what they want. You know, some, some friends don't want that. Some friends want their distance. That's fine too. Um, if you want to slow, if you want a friend that's slow to anger, then be that friend. If you want a friend that is um, just understanding, then be that friend. You know, just be whatever friend that you be the kind of friend that you want to your friends. So, you know, like I said before, a man that had friends must show himself friendly. And the Bible's always right, and it's right when it comes to that too. So um, so how are some ways that you can be a bad friend? Let's go over that. <clears throat> um, one of the biggest ways is by being judgmental. I don't really feel like if you are a friend with someone, you should be judgmental of them. Um, there's, we all do things different ways. We all raise our children different ways. We all homeschool different ways. We all <clears throat> clean our house different ways. We all cook and cook different ways. And you know, you're not, it's not a contest. If you have a friend, it should not be a contest. And I'm a competitive person, but when it comes to my friends, I strive not to be this way. I don't think I am with my friends, but I'm not like, um, well, I cooked my husband a five course meal today. What did you do? Or my kids are three reading levels ahead. What are your kids? You know, I, I just try to be there to offer support and encouragement and to root them along. I'm happy for them when they have successes and I'm sad when they have failures. I'm not over there going, if you would have just taken my advice, you wouldn't have had this failure. No, I'm sad for them when they have failures and I root for them when they have victories. So, you know, don't be judgmental of other moms. It's not a contest. We're all in this together. Um, you know, most of the ones, especially the ones that listen to my show are good moms, with good hearts that want to do the best for their kids. So do not be judgmental of other moms. Don't constantly be waiting for them to have failures in their life. I feel like some women are like, I don't know if it's an insecurity thing and it makes them feel better when other people fail. But for me, I don't want my friends to fail. I want my friends to succeed. So I'm going to try to encourage them. I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for them to mess up and be like, oh, I knew it. I knew they were going to mess up. You know, so don't be judgmental. Don't be harsh. <clears throat> um, don't be harsh in your criticism, especially number one rule. Don't talk about them behind their backs, obviously. Right. You know, be a true friend, show them grace. They're going to be, they're going to make you mad when they make you mad. Don't go, um, gossiping about them to all the other, you know, ladies in church, if they're a true friend, you know, don't be, obviously you can tell your husband about it if, if they hurt you, but if they, if they hurt you that badly, go to them, you know, tell them, say that kind of hurt my feelings. You know, I'm really sensitive in this area. Could you not maybe, you know, be so harsh when it comes to this? So if they're your true friend, you should be able to talk to them because the Bible also says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Okay. But then it, it talks about the kisses of an enemy being deceitful. So Enemies, and that's why I don't like flatterers, because the biggest flatterers turn out to be the harshest critics. Just remember that. The biggest flatterers turn out to be the harshest critics, and they will. They stab you in the back every time. So don't put, you know, don't, oh, how to be a bad friend is if you don't put any effort into it, yet you expect everyone to bow down to you. Like, you show up and you're like, here I am. Everyone just come flock to me. You know, no one likes an egotistical person. Um, if you go to church, let's say you're new to a church and you don't know many people and you want to make friends. Um, I've seen this a lot with different women throughout the years of being in church. They'll come in 
with a chip on their shoulder already just because they're new. And sometimes not even with a chip on their shoulder. Sometimes it's just scary. You're new to a church. You don't know anyone. And they'll sit down and they will expect everyone to come to them. And they get upset. They get upset when people don't bow down to them or don't come running up to them. Oh my goodness, a visitor! That's so great. What are you doing here? And I felt like our church is super friendly. So we do go. Most of the women in my church do go out of our way to introduce ourselves to new visitors and talk to them and things. But <clears throat> um, the, I'm just putting this out there for those of you that might have this tendency. You know, don't go into a new place and then just sit down by yourself. Don't reach out to anyone. Expect everyone to come to you and then get offended and get mad that it's not a friendly church. All right. So when I go places, I usually don't just sit somewhere. I'm always walking around, talking to people. I like to mingle. I know that's part of the extrovert in me, but I'm also trying to show myself friendly. The Bible says if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly. So my husband and I both do it. And then we are always one of the last. We're one of the first to get there. We're one of the last to leave all the time. Um, so if you're not putting any effort into it, if you're just plopping yourself down in a building, you're not being social to anyone, then yes, you're not going to have many friends. And so, you know, don't sit around complaining that you don't have any friends when you're not putting any effort into it. And <clears throat> I've even heard um, some women say that, you know, maybe... Well, oh, friendships are overrated. You don't need friends. Yes, you do. Everyone needs friends. If you look through the Bible, all Bible characters had friends. I mean, look at David and Jonathan. They were super, super close. It's not wrong to have friends. It's not wrong to put time into friendships. Um, obviously, you need to keep the main thing the main thing. If you're going on, you know, four day trips with your girlfriends and you're neglecting your husband and your home and your kids and, you know, church and soul winning and all those things, then yes, that's not good. But most of us have time for what we want to make time for. We have time for friendships. We have time to cultivate them. So, you know, if you're not going to put any effort into it, don't feel like a victim or don't feel like everyone hates you when you don't have friends. Friendship is hard work. So how, what are some ways to be a good friend? Well, number one, you need to be loving. Um, you need to be loyal. And loyalty is very, very hard to find in today's world. We live in a world where um, people will turn on each other in a second. And the Bible talks about this happening. You know, in the end times, it talks about the different family members turning on each other and things. So this is this is bound to happen. Loyalty is very underrated. Um, nowadays, there's not many loyal people. Um, I've seen this even with, it's hard, you know, when you're in the ministry, you don't, you don't want to become a cynic. You don't want to, but you often have church members. Don't be this church member. I'm just going to throw that out there. You often have church members that you love and you spend time with and you pray for, and you are here at church to serve them and serve the Lord and stuff. And you often, um, you often have church members singing your praises one day, but then the next week they're talking bad about you. They're running your name through the mud. They're attacking you. They're attacking your children. They're attacking your husband. So it is hard to really open yourself up for that. And if you're going to go into the ministry, I'm going to talk, I'm going to, talk to the wives right now that are going to be ministry wives. It is really, really hard not to become cynical towards people, but you don't want to be cynical. You don't want to come into church with a chip on your shoulder. You want to love your women. You want to, <clears throat> one way to help your husband is by loving, loving the church ladies. And, um, you know, most church ladies want to have a connection with other women. And if you can provide that, then that's always good. You know, I try to talk to all of our ladies. Sometimes I don't get around. It's just too busy. There's too, you know, or as we get more and more people, it gets harder and harder to spend more one-on-one um, -on -one time. And if you have not, go and watch Pastor Anderson's sermon called Don't Be That Guy. He outlined a lot of problems with people in churches, and I have definitely seen those throughout the years. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And like he was talking in there, it's impossible to spend one-on-one -on -one time, like especially for him who's running 350 people. You know, we're only running about 70, 60 or 70. So it's not as hard, but that's still 60 or 70 people. And a lot of times people don't even get there to like five minutes before. So if you want to have more personal communication with um, the pastor's family, 
we are here an hour early. We are here an hour early before Sunday school. So we are always here by, my husband's always here by 8.30. I'm usually here by 9.15, 9.30. And Sunday school starts at 10. Then we have church and people stay all day long. They stay and they eat. They stay all day long. And then we have evening service at 6. And then they still stay. So we're sometimes here till 9 o'clock. We're here the entire day. That is an entire day that you can get to know someone. So I really like that time. I try to stay. Sometimes I'm just too exhausted, but I can't. I try to stay the entire day and I try to get to know people better. And that's a great way to make friends when you're here. Wednesday nights, we have service and we're here an hour before. We stay an hour to two hours after. So those are all good times. If you're one of these people that get in five minutes before and leave as soon as the prayer is done, then you're missing out. You're missing out making friendships. You're missing out on getting to know people in the church. So just keep that in mind too. You know, we do the things we want to do. If we want to have friends, we're going to try to have friends. So um, be nice. You know, don't come in with a scowl all the time. Don't come in giving everyone a silent treatment. That's not a way to make friends. Be patient and be understanding. Be understanding what other women are going through. Like I said before, it's not a competition. We're not trying to compete to see who can get the best mother of the year award. We're all in this together. And then be patient. And we're going to go over a little bit um, just different situations in life that you can be patient and you can show grace to your friends. So um, what are some rules for friendship? Well, you've often heard me say, be friendly to all, but close to few. You don't need to go around telling everyone your whole heart story and all the difficult times that you're going through. And Facebook is um, a huge culprit with this. I think everyone really thinks, not everyone, I'm sorry, a few people. <laughs> I think a few people think that all their Facebook friends really are their Facebook friends. And it's just impossible. You can't get to know someone by a Facebook post, first of all, because that person is only deciding what they're putting on there. They're not putting the good, bad, and the ugly for you to see. But... On the flip side, some people do put all the ugly. <laughs> so they do constantly pour out their, their, um, you know, their hard times and all their woes. And my car broke down and my cat ran away and my house is on fire. And, you know, they, they just, everything's bad, 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 but nothing is good, 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 good. What about the next day when your cat came back? What about the man in the church that fixed your car for free? What about the fact that the firefighters got there and put the fire in your garage out and it didn't affect the rest of the house? You know, they never give the blessings. They're always, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. So you don't have to tell everyone every woe. I have a lot of things going on in my life and I try to be selective with the things that I let out. And I do have a few close friends that I can vent to. If I'm having a hard time and um, I tell them things, but I don't tell everyone everything and you don't need to, you can be selective with that. So, you know, um, but be friendly to all. Don't be a snob. Don't be in a clique, you know, try to branch out in your church and talk to everyone. Don't just talk to the select few that are worthy of your friendship. You know, try to branch out and talk to everyone, mingle with people, try to get to know people. Um you know, there's someone for everyone. There's not, not everyone's going to click. And I've often found that I don't click with women that have strong personalities like I do. And um, it's kind of funny. But then one of my friends does have a strong personality just like me. But she's an introvert too. So <laughs> I don't click with many extroverts that have my personality. And I've found through the years that if I do clash with a certain person, I am still nice to them and I'm still friendly, but we're not going to be best friends. And I move on. You know, there's someone for everyone. And you can't force a friendship. It's just going to happen if it happens. Um, one thing that really, really puts me off, and I've pro I kind of distance myself from people that do this. It really puts me off when I feel like people are trying to force a friendship with me. Like, you will be my friend, Cassandra. We will be best friends. You will be my friend. I don't like that. It's... You don't, you can't force a friendship. It either happens or it doesn't. And um, if it doesn't happen, don't be offended. I'm not offended by the ones that don't get along with me because there's just someone for everyone, you know, and I know there's a lot more people that I get along with than the ones that I don't. 
So I gravitate, obviously you're going to gravitate towards the ones that you get along with. You don't want to be walking around on eggshells. And if there, if you have a personality where you are very prickly and you, I do feel like I have to walk around eggshells um, around you, then I'm not going to be close to you. So that's just my preference. Who wants to be close to someone they have to walk around on eggshells all the time? So um, yeah, if you don't click, move on. Don't demand friendship. It's very off-putting to people. You know, you can't force a friendship. Be approachable. Don't come into the church with a storm cloud over your head, just waiting for someone to ask. And everyone's like, oh, who's going to ask? Who's going to ask? Who's going to ask? So how you doing today? I'm trying to think of anybody I don't have my church. <laughs> this is not directed at anyone. How you doing today? Susanna, there we go. We don't have a Susanna. How you doing today, Susanna? And then um, they're just like, well, let me tell you, this happened and this happened and this happened. And then it's like the floodgates are open. You know, don't be that person that comes in with a storm cloud over your head. You don't have to be fake. You don't have to be like fighting with your husband, like oh, the whole way home and or the whole way to church, and then you walk in, you're like, hi, everybody, it's such a great day. You know, you don't have to be fake about it, but you can just be be pleasant, be civil, be approachable, be smiling. A smile does wonders for your face. Be smiling, be happy. You know, you're in the Lord's house, and you only get to do it three times a week. So be happy about it. Be glad that you're there. It's time to sing praises of the Lord and learn about him from the preacher so just be approachable. Oh, here's another big one with women. Your friend is allowed to be friends with other people. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's funny because when you're kids, kids just don't get this because they're like very possessive. You know, like, she's my friend. No one else is friend. I've seen this with Lana and Allie. They get upset because there's a girl that's a, like right around both their ages. And um, it's actually Morgan's daughter. Morgan was on here. And they'll be like, Ellie would be like, Avery's my friend. Lana's like, no, Avery's my friend too. You know, and they get like in a competition. Avery's just like, you know, they both want to sit by Avery in church. I want to sit by Avery. No, I want to sit by Avery. So we're like, Avery, please sit in the middle. <laughs> so you can sit by both the kids, by both the girls. So, you know, little kids do that. And that's fine. That's fine when little kids do that. But it's not good when an adult woman is doing it. If you are close to someone, they are allowed to be close to other people. And don't get jealous of that. Jealousy has no place in a marriage. Jealousy has no place in friendship. And I'm not talking about like, you know, obviously envy and jealousy are wrong. You're, it's okay for you to be jealous of your spouse. If he's like going after another woman, obviously there's a time and place for jealousy of that kind. But when it comes to friendships, it's a little different. It's not like you know, till death do us part with one of your best friends. It's a girl. So you're allowed to have other friendships with other people. And your friend is allowed to have friends too. Even though my best friend and I are best friends, I like it when she has a close friend there in Missouri that she can talk to because um, it helps alleviate her burden. It helps alleviate her load. She likes it that I have close friends, um, other pastor's wives and them you know, a uh, couple ladies in our church. She likes it that I have close friends. She knows I need friends and everyone needs friends. And um, I feel like women that say that they don't need friends um, are just saying it as a shield because they don't, maybe they don't have many close friends and they feel bad about it. So their approach is, well, you don't need friends. You know, I'm too busy doing this. I'm too busy doing that. And we're all busy. Like I said, we're all busy, especially when you're married and you have a husband and children and you're homeschooling. You're super, super busy. But I feel like it's a defense mechanism a lot. You know, I don't have time to be social. I don't have time to have friends. But everyone needs friends. Everyone needs someone that they can call when they're having a bad day. Everyone needs um, someone to be understanding and compassionate and caring. Everyone needs that. We all need each other. In this life, it would be, I mean, what is the, one is the water? I can't even talk. What is one of the worst punishments in prison? They put you in solitary confinement. Why? Because you're away from other people. Humans need touch. We need companionship. We need um, someone who connects with us. 
So, and there's nothing wrong in that. I mean, Jesus had close friends. Jesus wasn't a loner off by himself. Look at all the, all the disciples that he was with all the time. In fact, John was so close to him that he laid on Jesus's chest. And so there's that physical touch. They, you know, there was nothing um, wrong about that. It was like a brotherly love. And <clears throat> Jonathan and David were super, super close. There's lots of examples in the Bible of people that were very, very close. And then even with um, one of my favorite stories that you see with uh, Ruth and Ruth and Naomi, they were very, very, very close as a mother and daughter-in-law. Um, they loved each other and they were very close. So we need, we need people in our lives to help us get through hard, time, hard times. So what are some ways that we can show grace through different situations in our life? Okay, so obviously going through hard times. We all need someone when we're going through hard times and the hard times are going to come. There's going to be um, people that die that you're close to in your life. There's going to be um, different things like that. So you can show your friend Grace, maybe if she's going through something physically. I know a lot of the ladies that listen to me have different health problems and that makes it really hard. And maybe they can't be as involved in their friend's lives as they want. You know, maybe you would like, if you look close, like your friend to be able to come over more and spend more time with you, but she's in physically of so much pain, you know, show her grace, try to be there. You know, you go to her house, you go clean her kitchen for her. If she's having um, a debilitating day, you take care of her kids for a while while you're there. Maybe they're going through financial, um, one way that you can show grace through your friends financially is if you have the means, um, and you know, they're really struggling go buy them some groceries, you know, give them a gift card for gas, or even if you just want to give them a nice date, you know, give them a gift card for a nice restaurant or something that they can get away. Um, I know this is one area I'm not able to do as much as I would like because we do have a large family and I do feel like a lot of times we live, you know, paycheck to paycheck like everyone else. And so I feel like I would get, I would love to give more financially if it was there. And if, if I did have it, I definitely would try to help out other people with it. Um, but there are other ways besides financial, you know, for me, one of my love languages is quality time. So for me every year, um, one of the ways that I show my best friend that I care and love for her is we go and we spend a week at her home. And I look forward to that. That's like one of the highlights of my year. And that's how I show my love is just by being around her. And I love it. Now for her, one of her love languages is gift giving. And so every um, Christmas, she sends me a huge, huge box full of goodies. Sometimes for just fall, she'll put a bunch of stuff together and send it to me. And that's her way to show me that she really cares for me and loves me. And that's not, I'm not strong. I'm not good with gifts. I struggle <laughs> trying to figure out the best thing to give people and that's not high in my priority list. So I really struggle to find other people. But now some of the gifts that I got, like for Kelly, so from some of you women that sent things, I could really tell that was like your love language. It was just so nicely wrapped and so much time and effort went into it. And that's great. If that's a way that you show someone love, then by all means do it. Um, what about emotionally if they're going through a hard time? There's going to be ups and downs and valleys. There's going to be times, like I said, when loved ones die, give an extra dose of grace to your friend during those times. Be there for her. Send her a card. Tell her you're thinking about her. Give her a phone call. Send her a text. Um, even if it's a virtual hug, send her a virtual hug. Uh, do things like that. Just let her know that you're there for her. And even if um, it's someone that's had a death, even a year after the fact, it's going to be really, really tough for them. Don't forget about them. You know, just let them know that you're still thinking about them. And you're still praying for them. Um, maybe if they're going through a devastating occurrence, such as um, infidelity or um, a divorce. You know, I know it's obviously not something that we like to think about, but it does happen to people in our lives. If they're going through a divorce, you know, let them know that you're praying for them and let them know that you're there if they need anything. Um, maybe the divorce wasn't their choice or maybe they were the ones that were cheated on. Now for a lot of friends, sometimes friends might just need space. If they're going through something, a lot of women internalize it and they don't want you trying to 
reach out to them. They just want to be left alone. So if that's what your friend wants, then give her the space. You know, just find out individually what each of your friends need and then try to do that for them. So, you know, there's going to be different seasons of life that we all go through. Um, obviously, when my kids were real tiny, I could not do as much as I can do now. Now that I have older ones that can help watch them, I can do a lot more when it comes to my friends. And like even with um, the church ladies, we plan little days out with, um, you know, like tea parties, shopping days, and I can do more of that now than when I had little itty bitty kids. So just remember there's different seasons in life and it'll get better. It'll get easier. So don't bemoan the fact that you have little kids. It goes fast, believe me. So, you know, if you, maybe your friend is going through a hard time because she's had four kids four and under, you know, if she would be okay with you watching, if you guys are really close and she'd be okay with you watching them for an evening so that her and her husband can go out for a date, then offer, you know, offer to help out during different seasons of life. If that's having a baby, offer to make meals. Um, you know, if it's the death of a loved one, like I said, do a card or something. If it's when they have a lot of little kids, maybe help out. You can even do play dates at her house so that all your kids can play together, but you guys can be right there and then get into some adult conversation. I did that with one of my friends and she's still my friend, Monica, <clears throat> from years past. We would go over to each other's houses a lot and we had little, little kids. So it was just nice. Our kids were all the same age and they would go terrorize the house and get hurt and... <laughs> all sorts of things, but we were able to have adult conversation and that was a lifesaver at that time in our life. So um, maybe your friend's mentally going through a hard time. You know, now's not the time to preach and say, depression is of the devil and things like that. Um, now is the time to just be an encouragement. I'm praying for you. What do you need from me? You know, it's not the time to be shooting her all these sermons unless she asks. If she asks, then by all means do it. But, you know, you need to listen to this and you need to fix this in your life and you need to do that. Chances are, if you are close, if your friend is close, she knows where you stand on the important topics. So when your friend does know where you stand on things, no need to hammer it into her head when she's going through a hard time. So, you know, just be there for your friends. Um, you can show grace just by being there. You know, just like I said, just you have to be careful. Don't make it into competition. Don't make it into, I'm better than you. I'm the best mom in the world. You know, be there for your friend and show her the same kind of grace that you want her to show you. So this is going to be a short night tonight because I was not able to interact with all of you on chat. Um, let's see. If it airs at 7 o'clock Central, that is 5 p.m. Arizona time. And at this time, while it's airing right now, I should be at a tea party. <laughs> so right now, um, I have not been able to check in with you during this because I am busy at a tea party. And I will try to post pictures of my fabulous week I'm going to have this week. But um, just I hope you got a lot out of this Grace series. And I do feel, you know, I, mean, I don't consider myself old, but I am close to 40 now. And... I have been raising kids for almost 18 years. So I have learned a few things along the way. And one thing that I wish I would have done over when I was younger and having kids was I wish I would have shown them more grace. I wish I would have shown my husband more grace in our early years. And I wish I would have shown my friends more grace. There were some things I said in the past to my friends. I'm just like, what is wrong with you? I look back and I still feel bad, even though I apologize and everything is fine and we're still friends. I feel so stupid. It's so bad over stupid stuff. I said my mouth got away from me. So really watch your mouth and not even your mouth, your fingers, watch your fingers, watch what you type, watch what you text, watch what you put on social media. It is all connected to your heart. And believe it or not, I actually love social media. Because I really feel like social media shows what's in a person's heart. Oftentimes they're different in person. But when you see the things that they write or the things that they post or the things that they put on social media, it shows what's in their heart. And that's why I don't like a lot of people if I follow them and they're putting nasty, nasty posts up 
even of um, stuff we're against. But I don't want to see that on my feed. I don't want to see transvestites and I don't want to see pedophiles and I don't want to see all these horrible things come across my feed. And I'm like, why are they posting these stories? Are they looking for these stories? Because when you go on my Google homepage, I don't have any of those nasty stories pop up. So I'm like, why are they seeing this stuff? Are they Googling it? I don't know. That is a huge red flag to me. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And we speak a lot of different ways in 2019. We speak with our eyes, with our mouth, with our fingers, especially on social media. So I really feel like even if you think you know someone, their heart comes through on things they write, on comments they leave, on posts they do. It all comes out through social media. So be careful. Um, be there for your friends. Show grace. Show grace to your kids. Show grace to your husband. Show grace to your friends. It's not easy being a Christian in today's world. And we don't need other Christians constantly attacking good Christians that are trying their best. We don't need good moms attacking good moms. We don't need a judgmental attitude in the church, especially. Let the preacher preach. And just do your best, serve the Lord, and um, let God convict other people of their sin. You don't need to be the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be convicting other people of their sin all the time. Um, <clears throat> I really feel like grace is lacking in a lot of different areas. And I'm hoping that this will have an impact on someone and they will reevaluate just how they come across Maybe how you come across your social media, maybe how you come across in person, maybe how you come across to your kids or your husband, you know, and it'll help you think twice before flying off the handle. Just stop and think about it and don't fly off the handle. So I hope you all have a great week. I'll be in Arizona all week. So I will be back to the regularly scheduled time next Monday night. Maybe I can do a giveaway next week with the last few shirts I have. It's mainly extra larges. I do have a couple one X's, maybe one, two X. I'm not sure. I'll have to look, but maybe next week we'll do that. So you all have a great week and we will talk to you later.